What's the episode on this one? You. Me? You're kidding, right? No. Except the loss, I thought. Uh, uh, I thought we took about five to eight minutes off in the first period, and then I don't know, probably the first eight minutes of the third period, we were sluggish and finished hard. But you can't be taking uh, minutes off like that. So uh, unacceptable loss. Just got to accept it and regroup for a must-win game tomorrow. Um, right off the beginning, we didn't come out desperate enough. Our, our mentality wasn't there. We had a couple power play chances right off the beginning, and we, we didn't do anything with that. We just fluffed them away. And you know we got to come out. You got to come out strong right at the very beginning, especially if you get opportunities like that in the first. And when our four lines are rolling, we're pushing hard. We're getting create a lot of offense out there. And Today we just weren't doing our thing, we weren't, uh, we weren't pressing hard enough, we weren't making plays and it just wasn't working out. Uh, we need to score a little bit more and generate a little bit more offense. One goal is not going to win you a lot of games on the road. Um, you know, I thought we needed to generate more in the first half of this hockey game. Yeah, I think it showed a lot of character and maturity in our team, especially the way St. Cloud was pouring it on at the end there. Uh, they had a lot of chances and guys were really manning up and, and uh, just being warriors out there. So I think that speaks volumes about our team and uh, you know our character on the team. Yeah, I was right on top of the crease and actually that was probably my guy, but uh, <laughs> I definitely saw the guy kick it in, so it was kind of a relief right away. So. You know, obviously the last couple minutes were got pretty hairy with you know on the uh, on the penalty kill, um, but you know to that point in time we were doing a good job. But you know you got to be prepared to run into uh, every situation, and um, we did a good job on the penalty kill, and um, you know uh, we we got a break on the disallowed goal. But I guess I don't really look at it you know too much as a break because it was you know it was an obvious correct call on the on the no goal. Right now we're a playoff mode, we know that uh, as far as national standings go, we know that we every game is critical, every point is critical for us, so I think uh, our mentality is definitely uh, in playoff mode right now and it needs to stay that way uh, throughout the rest of the season or else you know, we're not going to be where we want to be at the end of the year. ourselves to, to play at our best level, try to improve parts of our game uh, and make sure that we're ready to play at the drop of the puck and that's, uh, that's a mental preparation and obviously a physical preparation throughout the week. Got a little bit of a goofball uh, in the dressing room but uh, he's a great guy, great teammate I think. Uh, can't say anything bad about, bad about him. I think uh, 
Probably one of the most liked guys in the team. It's a blast. I mean, there's no other way to really put it. Like, both of those guys are just such elite hockey players, and uh, they just make so much stuff happen out there. It's just a, it's fun to just kind of, I mean, it makes my job really easy out there. Just get them in the puck and kind of watch and sit back and enjoy it. So, yeah, I think uh, we got to play together for a while uh, my freshman year, and then for about half the season last year. So, I think we have pretty good chemistry, and uh, he's got a lot of talent and uh, really sees the ice well, so he can. Uh, like get, get you the puck in open spots, which is nice for, uh, for Brock and I think. It's fun. It makes my job a lot easier since they're both such, uh, such good players. Danny makes a lot of big plays and Knight is just so smart. Corbin's uh, he's actually very uh, very quiet, very humble, um, which we like to, to kind of mess with him a little bit about it. And uh, I don't know Brock and I kind of gang up on him about it, but uh, no, I'm a really humble guy. Uh, Corbin is uh, you know just truly an outstanding person. Uh, you know sometimes you think of him as a, as a young man, but he's mature well beyond his years. Uh, he's, a, he's a tremendous teammate. He's great in our community. Uh, one of the more genuine uh, uh, people that uh, you know, I've come across in this business. So a real joy to be around him every day and uh, to get an opportunity to work with him and quite honestly learn from him. No, I mean, I think any hockey player, especially at a higher level like this, would tell you that the only thing on their mind when the game's on is the game itself and doing whatever it takes to help the team win. And, I think that's you know that's always been my mentality. I, I'm sure everybody else's mentality as well. AB, I'm the, the class I had to find on last semester. We did really well, so I don't know. Hopefully, I can do well without him, but it'll be tough. I would say I'm a lot. Well, I mean, Dan's pretty proud to be American, but I'm pretty proud to be Canadian. So I think I bring a little uh, I don't know what the right word would flair to that line with my nationality. And oh yeah, I think uh, certainly it shows through. Maybe. Uh, it's kind of one moment you'd probably get him riled up pretty good is if you start going uh, against Canada. So I'm with him on that one. Why is he always smiling? Yeah. He's always around me and I'm a pretty funny guy, so I just keep him pretty humored all the time. See? He's smiling right now. See? Can't hold it. Can't fight it. has known the last couple times I've been on here I kind of make fun of Corbin Knight so on Twitter today I saw a tweet by I believe it was Paul Knight a pastor at the church who retweeted something that's uh, some long lines of Corbin Knight has uh, the heart of a lion so I I, absolutely I retweeted it for sure so hopefully he sees that <laughs> <laughs> 